thank you your story for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present on this important topic uh, for this master class application security has become one of the buzzwords and one of the key headaches as well as some of the biggest pain points for any business the reason being applications are central to any business not just for productivity and differentiation but for their very survival so i am going to be talking about how to secure your applications and i'll be talking about the playbook concepts which is a buzzword in all the startup community best practices playbook for growth hacking best practices playbook for uh, demand gen we are in the business of application security based on our uh, collective experience of serving 2000 plus customer we have put together a very high level application security playbook which any businesses can apply and it's basically a collection of all the best practices and some high level themes that you need to look at with respect to securing your applications because fundamentally if you secure your applications you can go digital fearlessly and industries has been formed with this vision vision of enabling businesses to go digital fearlessly by making it extremely easy for them to secure their web applications and api thank you very much once again your story i would like to get into the specifics of uh, the playbook concepts so before getting into this bullet items of uh, the security playbook for securing your applications let's look at some of the application expo explosion key trends that are happening today uh this trend has actually been given a rocket fuel post covid because even traditional businesses which never even had digitization as part of their road map now have to embrace digitization for their very existence and survival so the number one key trend that is happening is an explosion of digitization initiative if you sit back and think about what is the fundamental core of digitization you will realize the central to any digitization initiative is some application that is providing a service that was not done before or something that is being done better by the business for consumers to do it online so even the traditional brick and mortar companies uh, are embracing digitization post covid era so digitization has given a rocket fuel for the number of new applications that are coming up for in the public domain so that is the number one key trend the number two key trend which has been going on for a long time but tied with the first trend which is creating an amplified effect is cloud computing and adoption of cloud computing by most of these businesses the reason being not cost but speed because you had to go ahead and embrace digitization do things faster to serve your customer better and stay relevant cloud moving your entire application and your entire stack into the cloud enables you to do things in a much more faster and agile manner so the second key trend tied with the first one is also providing uh, a significant amount of speed and the number of new new digital services that are coming out in the market the third trend which is the biggest force multiplier that i feel combined with the first two is no application is going to be an island there is aggregation of services that is going to happen and people are adopting open apis like for example in fintech and banking uh, there is this concept of an open banking api in uh, e-commerce there is this concept of a standard product which provides a set of services to have an online shopping store and each of them expose their apis that the business owners can aggregate integrate with and build their own ip on top of that so open apis aggregated services that are consumed stitched together on top of your own business logic which provides a service to your customer as part of the digitization initiative is probably one of the biggest force multiplier in terms of the number of new new applications that are coming out because all three put together translates the ability for a concept and an idea to actually be given shape and deployed and used by the customer shorter and shorter right so these three trends makes application very very exciting but at the same time the security of this application also becomes a worry which is what i will be going to in the next few minutes now you know that applications are central to your business digitization is going to be here forever i mean even if you have embraced digitization not by choice but because of uh, the post covid and the uh, very survival even if things get back to normal the productivity benefits that everybody get 
from the digitization initiatives will continue to stay. It's not like they're going to go back to the old pre brick uh, digitization days uh, just because things have come back to normal. So let's look at what is application security. I, I'm pretty sure I don't have to really preach this concept to everybody, but just to set the context in terms of how we are building up going forward in this masterclass, I will just give you a very short one line description. Application security is the process of making sure that every application updates and deployment or new features that you're adding to your service as part of a digitization initiative is free from hackable security vulnerabilities that others from outside can access it and exploit. So making sure that you first get a visibility of your application's uh, vulnerabilities and taking steps to fix it collectively is what we call as an application security uh, baseline, right? Now, why is application security important? I mean, I have heard people say that we are not as big yet. So uh, uh, it may not be as important to us like some other company, which is a big brand doing bigger businesses and a bigger user base. The reality is once you put something online and it is there for consumption, there are people out there in the internet who are constantly spreading their net and seeking for vulnerabilities to exploit, right? And the smaller you are, the bigger uh, the challenge for you to overcome those incidents because you might not have the, the ability to overcome it. And basically the setback is the bigger uh, impact for a SMB company than it is for a bigger brand, right? So application security, independent of the size of the business is very, very important. Now comes the real, reason why you should worry about it or any business should worry about it. I talked about cloud computing. I talked about uh, speed of deployment and everything. Uh, the speed of deployment comes because a lot of things are taken care of and automated by these providers. But all of them say one thing, applications your responsibility and hence the security of those applications is also the responsibility of the business. AWS comes has a full play a full fledged document on this concept of shared responsibility. Things like DNS security, network level security, volumetric network level DDoS, those kind of things they take care of it. But what is put on that compute instance which you put in the cloud is your IP, is your service, and hence the cloud provider does not know anything about it. It is your responsibility, and because it is the responsibility of the business. Security also becomes a responsibility to the business and therein becomes, comes in one of the biggest challenges because this is very, very uh, complex. It requires a lot more special expertise for securing an application than it would be for other components like uh, server level security or network level security. Applications is very, very complex. And the reason for that, we will find out in the next slide. So what are the key challenges of application security? Now, if we connect back to what is driving this digitization initiatives, I mentioned those three things. And the third thing which I mentioned, aggregation of services is an integral and biggest force multiplier for speed. Each of them in isolation has got their own development cycles. Like if you, if you look at a shopping cart, you have integration of the payment gateway. You might have integration with a uh, yeah, Shopify equivalent services that you're going to put as part of your uh, e-commerce uh, shopping portal. Uh, you will have many other third-party microservices that you're integrating together as part of this application. Each one of them, even though the collective ownership of what it does is with the business, each one of them will have its own life cycle and updates and uh, things done by the different people working on it. Even within your own company, assuming you own all of them, you'll have multiple development teams owning different modules and providing different updates. Short and sweet, there are many moving parts having its own set of update cycles, but collectively it is packaged and provided as a service to your customers or stakeholders for specific value, uh, for, for providing a specific uh, differentiation or value or a better way of doing something, uh, something for your customers, whether it is on banking, whether it is on uh, uh, taking a cab ride or whether it's ordering a food, central to that is some application which has got many, many components and moving parts. Now, all these moving parts and to secure them, 
Even if it take one in isolation, what does it require for me to secure that application? It requires a special expertise. Application security, the security part of this is a very specialized field which requires dedicated time, effort, and over a period of time building a lot of expertise. Now, all the businesses I talk with endorse the need for this. They know that without this, uh, uh, it's not just mitigating the risk, but also their customers are going to place trust on their service that they're enabling for their customers, only if they secure it. But even though the need is there, they don't have the expertise. And even if they have the expertise or the time or the ability to build it, they don't have the time to do it because it takes time away from the core, right? So special expertise and lack of time to build that expertise is one of the main reasons, in addition to many moving parts, that uh, makes it very, very challenging. And as I said in the previous slide, independent of the size of the company, the threats are real. I mean, there is a statistics that I saw uh, uh, about eight, nine years back, and I actually saw it demonstrated to me. A vulnerable IP that is put publicly exposed to the internet, it takes less than a few minutes for somebody to discover and start probing attacks on it. Because there are bots that are continuously looking at all these public IPs and all these services and trying to look at vulnerabilities. Because a hacker or a person who's carrying out an attack is also not going to spend their time doing things where the possibility of exploit is lower. So there is lots of probes that are being carried out. A vulnerability is received, and then they start targeting those vulnerabilities. Right? So the threats are real. Anything that is online and public facing has got an equal amount of threat, independent of how famous and non-famous that particular application is. And in fact, being non-famous or being smaller, actually, I believe, amplifies the risk further because the cost of mitigating them and reacting to them is a lot more uh, for the smaller companies. So it, it becomes even more important for the SMBs to look at it ground up than it is for the established companies. Having said that, anything online, application security has to be viewed as the oxygen, must have oxygen ventilator, which is probably a right example in today's time for the business to continue breathing in a worry, in a worry free manner. Now, uh, I talked about exploits of vulnerabilities, but there are there is a new kind of attack, specifically ransomware, which is the extortion business on the web uh, on the online business, which is the key attack vector is denial of service uh, carried out through automated bots that can bring down a service and use that threat as the anchor point for demanding ransoms. Right. So DDoS and bot as key attack vectors are one of the top headaches for many customer, many businesses, uh, especially because that becomes the trigger point for also driving uh, ransomware and a lot of business silently end up paying that too. They don't make it public because it's a reputation damage, but even though their heart and their intent is not to fall victim to it, the reality is if the site is going down and there is a big shopping or a big uh, sale that is going on or a big transaction or volume or trading time where this happens, depending on the nature of the business, they would rather uh, reduce their moral uh, uh, compass in terms of, yes, this is the right thing to do, but it's okay if I succumb to it right now because my business can go down. This is a sad reality, right? So you need to put in place systems, processes, and procedures in place. So not to do it because a lot of people who succumb to it do not have the ability to counter it in a transparent manner and end up succumbing to it. So these are some of the key challenges. The threats are real. DDoS and bot attacks are becoming more and more prevalent. More applications are coming up. So hence, smaller companies have to look at it ground up a lot more with a little bit more constrained budgets than bigger companies. And where do you find the specialized time expertise to look at this and then manage the many, many moving parts as part of your development life cycle is one of the key challenges of any application security program. Okay, now I've talked about all the problems. I've talked about the definition. Now we have to look at how do we take a look at addressing those challenges. So this is where we get to the playbook. As I said, applications has got many moving parts. They're continuously changing. It is your responsibility. And the hackers or the people who are probing for this do not differentiate between smaller and big and types of businesses. 
they are looking for nature of exploits and then they look at the filters for where to prioritize their effort for doing the attacks now the businesses have an unfair advantage over the hackers because you have to worry only about your applications whereas they have to worry about where to attack and their surface area or the net they're spreading is bigger so the first the most simple concept is while you can get inundated with many many application security threat vectors and breach uh, users which can to some extent cause a breach fatigue and also make someone worry put those things aside of course you have to digest and understand them but put those things aside and start with taking control of what is in your hands a very simple concept but inventory of all your public facing applications should be the first playbook item that anybody has to do as part of an application security program you will be amazed that once you do this exercise the number of things that existed or taken for granted but you didn't know will come to the surface it will be this api that is being called it will be this components these components all of them get an inventory of all the public facing applications that you are servicing and the application that is integrating with as the first inventory so first you have to define that this is the area that i need to take control of and it starts with getting an inventory of your public facing application once you get that the next step is i have to secure them each one of them which is public facing i have to secure them now where do we begin again you will get lot of uh, literatures on ddos attack ransomware attack uh, uh, poodle this i mean poodle is one recent uh, command injection that took over the shell of a, a specific type of a, 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 a unix shell right and the attack is carried out through uh, a public facing through an http command injection shell attack right so i mean lot of buzzwords just in there you as a business who is doing a specialized thing how do you make sense of all these things right um, so what is relevant to the inventory of applications that you have and what is my risk will be the first question that you have to ask and to know that risk you have to insist on doing a security assessment not just one time but to put a program in place to do the security assessment on a consistent regular basis now what should that consistent regular basis depends on it can be a combination of automated and manual where the automated can be done as frequently as daily where you get the basic assessment of uh, uh, common threat attacks and vectors that can be potentially be exploitable that by itself will cover a lot because guess what the hackers are automating and doing the same things when they are doing the probes so insist on doing a security assessment and a report of your risk not just for the applications that is in your hand but also on the applications that you integrate with so that collectively that all public facing application at least you start getting a visibility of your risks that is the first uh step beside after taking the inventory that you had to look at because no visibility no security right so getting the visibility of your risk is going to be a very very important component once you get this visibility then you look at how do i on a consistent basis keep this visibility as a continuous program and also take steps to fix and mitigate those risks that has been identified you will have to partner with Uh, vendors who provide these as specialized services so partner with vendors who provide security risk assessment security protection and become your managed security partner not just throwing in a tool and walking away so the trend that we are seeing and it's something that i have put in as a playbook item is solutions more than tools so look at vendors who are producing those tool also provide or back it up with the best practices and the managed services at least on their tool on top of uh, uh the the license or the software license they get what this does is it pushes the bar on the oem vendors to also provide the required level of support not just incident management but the required level of support to manage it and make it working on a consistent basis as part of this uh, software license they get it raises the bar even further up on terms of the pure system integrators that you might deal with that 
don't end up charging me for a service which a tool is supposed to do or the best in uh, or the the person who has built the tool can support it you will have to raise the bar a little bit further up as a pure system integrator or a pure play service provider and you as an internal team at the end of the day the ownership will be with the application business owner you have your internal team which will look at one layer on top of this making sure it is aligned to your overall business goals business continuity goals compliance trust reporting and all those things right so insist on uh, first thing is partner with the best in breed and second is insist on uh, every tool that you get on a security area insist on providing some sort of a managed services component bundled in with the tool instead of just a licensing model where they throw in a tool and walk away very very important so these three things are what i would call as best practices habit now the fourth thing is also a habit but more of a cultural thing where you'll have to build a culture of transparency which is key to building trust with your customers because all these things in spite of doing it you are mitigating the risk but certain things can go wrong certain unforeseen things can happen now central to building transparency is making sure that you are able to proactively share certain things with your customers before something bad happens in a transparent manner now if you look back at some of the top breaches that has happened in the last few years and you look at some of the businesses that have gone down because of these breaches and you really dig down deeper into what is causing it is it the risk mitigation failure itself that caused it or is it the the, the breach or the attack or something technical that caused it or is it the inability of those impacted businesses to be able to communicate what happened in a transparent manner the result will be it will be the later because it's not because the breach itself doesn't kill the business it their inability to deal with what happened what they are doing to fix it and how they communicate to the customers that evokes trust is one of the fundamental reasons why not being able to do that is one of the fundamental reasons where uh, some sort of an incident can bring down a business to such an extent because it erodes the trust so all the first three items as a habit enables you to as a culture also build in transparency which enables you to build trust which is so central for any business so application security even though it's a risk mitigation should be viewed as a trust building factor for your business besides trust building factor there is also clear cut straightforward technically right productivity improvements as well because if we have this program your back end applications or back automatically deals with only the right set of payloads if you have a very robust application security so your analytics engine the payload that it has to deal with all those things become more and more relevant so that straight away uh, yeah yeah a productivity benefit but fundamentally it has to build trust which goes any business is running on trust especially with your customers so take all these concepts and it comes down to continuous risk detection continuous risk protection behavior based analysis of your application partnering with the best they are the key concepts that will have to that is the best way i can summarize it as the themes of the playbook that will have to put in place and then from this look at what are the partners and the set of people and the system integrators and resellers that i have to bring onto the board to make uh, implement this playbook and make it a journey so here are the six playbook execution items that i have put in uh for every business to actually look at each one of them and do a deeper dive to summarize what i said in the previous slide in terms of this graph it's actually putting them into bullet items here that you start with getting an inventory of all your public facing components take control of it and start doing a visibility of your risk assessment which is application security assessment then make sure that not only do you do it uh, do the visibility but you take steps to protect against them where you take pass it on to your development team or the owner who owns that particular module where the risk has been identified but you also do a virtual patching and putting it behind a web application firewall is imperative because what it does is the web application firewall besides just virtual patching and time to fix benefit of an identified vulnerability it will also provide you insights of an attempted hack attempt against those vulnerabilities which will act as a self fulfilling learning point for 
taking a more aggressive uh, defense posture against the same identity which is trying to do anything else in the future. So one is, of course, you can take action to fix it, but you also have continuous policies that are updated based on your risk that will identify those uh, attacks or vectors, where they are coming from, which region they're coming from, which IPs, which session, and then take uh, uh, steps based on learning. Ensure that you work with a vendor that will provide you risk assessment and risk protection, which is web application and API protection firewall, also provides not just a tool and walk away, but also provides the, the expertise from the OEM, the expertise from the OEM support team is certainly good because it is their product is, is very, very important in, this, in the security field more than any other field as well. But the concept I think can be applicable to any field. The OEM providing the manageability and the success criteria of making it successfully deployed to the customer is going to be a key element for any businesses to look at when they procure a tool or a software. So look at uh, management and to look at some examples of management, uh, false positive checks, false negative checks, policy updates, uh, having somebody to explain in details what that particular risk assessment that has some technical mumbo jumbo about some attack vector, SQL injection, blind SQL injection, cross-site scripting, reflective cross-site scripting, all the, what does it mean in terms of your application and what can be done? So having all these things bundled in as part of your managed services, along with the tool, uh, tools of risk assessment, risk protection is going to be very, very important. And the three points that I mentioned here of risk assessment, risk protection, and management, try to enforce this, not just for the applications and modules that you develop and control, but also try to ask the vendors you integrate with on what is it that they are doing on these areas with respect because at the end of the day, you are calling their services over the cloud and something bad happens there. And because you are incorporating it and giving it to your customers is going to be risk for you. So implement the same concept across all the applications that is also in your, in your control and those that you integrate with, right? And finally, at the end of this, which helps you build the transparency culture is all the things that is being done or planned to be done or the learning that is happening and updates that are happening, that has to be a very simple, easy to consume report that can be shared to all the stakeholders saying that these are all the programs that I have. These are all the things that we have been doing. And these are all the improvements, which even in, the, in, in spite of doing all this, suppose a breach happens, the ability for you to react to those breaches by taking quick steps and also showing what has already been done in the past is going to be fundamentally important and could be the biggest differentiator for you to be able to overcome those breaks by building trust as opposed to just fixing it uh, or an incident that is happening. So all of this, I would like to uh, uh, say that what is the desired outcome for an application security program, right? Uh, of course, the mitigating risk, keeping hackers away, uh, business continuity programs, all those things are real. But from a, from a business language standpoint, if you implement a successful application security program in your company, the expected desired outcome and business benefit will be faster digitization rollout. So that new initiatives, new programs, let's say you're an insurance company and you want to launch a new insurance product that is going to be purchased online or a new way of ordering certain things that is going to happen uh, for your business those digitization program can be rolled out faster if you have this playbook implemented implemented because the same concepts the same playbook can be replicated across any applications that you do in your organization so faster digitization rollout which actually ensure that your agile it platform actually becomes agile in a secured manner and security will not come in the way of your agility and enables you to create an extended and cohesive ecosystem, all of them secure by implementing this concept, not just with the APIs that you integrate with, because you're implementing this concept into this extended cohesive system, and also partnering with the best in breed, not everything can be done by yourself, partner with the right security players, right OEM who offers management on top of it, creates an extended and cohesive ecos ecosystem, not just feature X and feature Y that you provide as part of your product and service, but a nice cohesive ecosystem that ultimately has to provide a delightful customer experience that is built on trust. 
because fundamentally that is what is needed for a business growth and application security with an ability to do that. I want to now put in a shameless plug of uh, what is it we as a company are doing in this space. Um, in this space, as I said, was formed with the vision of enabling businesses to go digital fearlessly. And our fundamental approach to do that is to make it extremely easy for any business to run mobile applications. So our key product is Aptrana, which puts all the things that I mentioned about in this playbook under one umbrella, providing you managed risk detection, managed risk protection, managed risk monitoring and updates. And finally, all of this should not be at the cost of speed of your applications or your website going down. Also bundling in a managed content delivery network and a CDN service so that you can do a no trade off security with the best in breed partner. Either us or anybody else, the concept remains the same, but we are trying to play our part in this playbook system. And that is part of our way to help the community and grow the business. So on that note, anybody who's in the masterclass, here's the Aptrana offer that I want to put on the table. Anybody who comes to us, send, send an email to sales at industries.com, uh, putting a masterclass uh, as the title uh, in the sales at industries.com email. We have a program that enables a free forever security assessment of any public facing applications. Twice a month, the basic checks, it's like going to a doctor and getting your basic health check done for free. A free forever security assessment of your web application will be provided by us. If you want to go for a complete risk protection, risk management and everything, we have a 14 day free trial. And in those 14 day free trial, the entire thing that I talked about, including managed services can be experienced so that you can look at protecting your applications and focus on your business while we take care of the application security away from you. To summarize as a closing note, implement these concepts to build your digital immune systems because applications are central to any digitization initiatives. It is the responsibility of the business and hence security is also the responsibility of the business. The playbook enables you the ability to take that responsibility but not have to do the grunt of the work but partner with the best. And it is central to building trust with your stakeholders as much as it is about mitigating risk. And hence you had to partner with the best in breed to create an ec ec cohesive ecosystem to address this complex problem. Thank you very much. And I'll be more than happy to follow up with each one of you uh, as a closing note. Uh, uh, very, very, very happy to have this opportunity once again to be part of this uh, masterclass presentation. Uh, as I said, each one of the bullet items they mentioned can become a more detailed playbook by itself. Anybody who wants to have a detailed discussion on each of the bullet items that I mentioned as part of the playbook, because they themselves can become a detailed more playbook on that particular item. I'll be more than happy to share my thoughts and deeper contents with you. Uh, if you want to come and reach out to me, uh, to me my email ID is venkatesh.sundar.industries.com. Or if you want to make avail of the trial offer and the free forever program that I mentioned, send an email to sales at industries.com. Looking forward to hear from each one of you. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. Bye.